everyone, welcome to the updated beginner druid guide. It will give you a very basic idea of how to play druid in its current state following the release of Secret of the Obscure. If you watched my original beginner druid guide, you will have to bear with me repeating myself sometimes for the sake of those new to druid and to my channel. Druid is, was, and probably will always be the strongest and most versatile healer in the game. You provide full up time of really powerful boons such as Might, Fury, Alacrity, Regeneration, Swiftness, and Protection to 5 people while also having a lot of insanely strong healing. If used correctly, Druid can be the only healer in a 10-man squad. The real strength of Druid come from the amount of healing, especially ranged healing it provides, and the possibility of huge roll compression, like being able to tank and or deal with mechanics, such as pushing on Solace Horror or CCing Anomalies on Kadim the Peerless, but I'll be going into detail on that in the more advanced the Druid guides. For now, let's focus on the bare minimum you will need to know. These are the traits and skills you will be using for now, and we'll go into variants later. As a beginner, you can play this everywhere. You can copy the build code from the video description. Equipping the Druid trait line means you have the minor trait Celestial Being, which grants you access to the new class mechanic Celestial Avatar on your F5 key by default. It's a transform skill that needs to be charged before it can be cast. But in raids and strikes, you will always st start the fight with it fully charged. Due to a minor trait, it charges over time on its own, although very slowly. You can charge it faster by dealing damage or healing allies to fill up this blue bar. When you enter CA, all of your weapon skills will be replaced by powerful healing abilities, but your astral force will gradually deplete over time. As for your traits, in the Druid trait line, you're running Cultivated Synergy for additional healing on your heal skill, Verdant Edging to make your Glyphs grant protection, and Grace of the Land to make your CA skills grant alacrity, which is your most important trait you will never change. You take Nature Magic for Wellspring, which makes your heal skill grant regeneration and gives you additional healing power based on your power, Windburn Notes, which makes your Call of the Wild give regeneration, and Invigorating Bond, which makes your pet of two skill give protection and vigor. You take Marksmanship for Clarion Bond, which gives boons on pet swap, and Moment of Clarity, which makes your daisies and st stuns stronger, allowing you to deal more breakbar damage. As for gear, there are two variants, both linked, linked in the description. The first variant uses minstrel armor, giver weapons, and some giver trinkets. I recommend this one for players already familiar with raids, or those confident enough to start tanking bosses straight away. The second variant uses full harrier armor, weapons, and trinkets. I recommend this one for new players who aren't ready to tank yet and want to take things one step at a time. Both variants will give you a lot of concentration, which helps bring you to 100% boon duration on this build, as well as a lot of healing power, but only the first variant will give you the vitality and toughness necessary to tank the hard hitting raid bosses. Further down your druid journey, you should be getting both of them and possibly even more, but if you're able to get these two from the get-go, that's great. Neither is stri strictly better than the other, since both have their uses. For now, you'll always be running a staff on one weapon set and an axe main hand with warhorn offhand on the other. On the harrier variant, you'll also need monk runes for additional healing power and boon duration, while on the tank variant, water runes are more optimal. You'll also need transference sigil and paralyzation sigil on both weapon sets. Transference sigil will increase your outgoing healing even further, while paralyzation will make your stuns and dazes stronger for more breakbar damage. You will also need a Monk Relic for a further increase in your outgoing healing. While you're on Axe Warhorn, your most important skill is Call of the Wild. It's your main source of Fury, Swiftness and Regeneration, and it also gives a significant amount of Might. Additionally, it's a strong CC skill. You should be always be pressing it off cooldown and delay it only when a break bar is about to happen. The rest of the skills on this weapon set are a low priority. They are damage skills that you can press whenever you have nothing else to do, but keep in mind that pressing them will help charge your Celestial Avatar. As for staff skills, Sublime Conversion grants regeneration with no target cap, destroys projectiles, and is also a water field. This synergizes well with Ancestral Grace, which is already a strong burst heal on its own, but also a blast finisher, and blasting a water field produces area healing. 
Aside from being a finisher, Ancestral Grace is your only mobility skill and will dash you to the place where you cast it. Solar Beam can be targeted at both enemies or allies and will heal up to three people inside the beam. Astral Wisp can similarly be targeted both at enemies or allies and will produce a healing orb which will circle around the target. Vine Surge is your least re relevant skill but can be used to briefly immobilize enemies. When you enter Celestial Avatar, your most important skill from Boon perspective is Rejuvenating Tides. It's a strong pulsing AoE heal around you, which will grant might and alacrity on each pulse due to the trade grace of the land. Seed of Life is an instacast skill, meaning it has no cast time and can be cast while casting other skills, which is why you should always be spamming it for as long as you remain in CA. It helps with alacrity ramp up and upkeep, heals, and most importantly, condi cleanses. Lunar Impact, on the other hand, is your strongest burst heal and should be used whenever your group needs a lot of healing. It's also a CC skill, so we can use it on break bars even if the healing isn't needed. Furthermore, it has an insane range, so you can cast it on players or enemies really far away from you as well. Natural Convergence will provide you with personal stability and root you in place during the cast. You can move to cancel the cast if you're using it for stability only. If you don't cancel it, it will pulse cripple and slow and then immobilize enemies once it finishes. It also pulses might, which is why you want to use it in your opener. Keep in mind, this is the only CA skill that does not heal but deals damage instead. If all your other CA skills are on cooldown, you can spam Cosmic Ray for healing. Similarly to Lunar Impact, it can be cast from very far away. As for your utility skills, you'll be running two spirits for boons, Sun for Might and Stone for Protection. You should press Sun in your opener and then off cooldown. As for Stone, you should generally press it roughly off cooldown for protection, but because it also gives Aegis, you can delay it to give your squad a block for mechanics such as Gorsable Slum, Deimos Pizza or anything else they might get hit by. Glyph of Equality grants one stack of stability to five people in the 300 radius around you. When used outside of CA, it is also your strongest CC skill and a personal stun break. When cast inside CA, it becomes a 5 minute st stun break but does not CC anymore. Due to the trade verdant etching, it also grants protection both inside and outside of CA. Glyph of Rejuvenation is your strongest burst heal and should be used when your squad needs a lot of healing but you're unable to enter CA. Use it after Veil Guardian Greens, etc. Your elite skill is Glyph of Stunners. It grants stability and pulses healing both inside and outside CA. When used inside CA, it's also a pulsing res. Outside of CA, it's also a strong pulsing condi cleanse. It has a long cooldown and can be used for many different purposes, so use it wisely. For your pets, you should run Gazelle and Electric Wyvern or Edra Hunter for their strong CC skills on F2 key by default. But on bosses where you don't need that much CC, you should replace one of them for a white tiger for the EGC grants. If you're going on an adventure to collect pets, you can grab Jacaranda, Iboga, Siege Turtle, Smoke Scale, Brown Bear, Lynx, Wolf, and Fire Wyvern in this order of priority for later. They will become relevant in the more advanced guides. As of the time this video is made, there is a bug with druid pets sometimes not casting their skills when you press them. To play around it and not lose your mind spamming the key, you can press recall F3 by default right before you press the pet skill and it will cast without issue immediately. It's very, very important you use food and utility when playing druid because they give you outgoing healing modifiers. You should ideally use ascended food, bowl of fruit salad with mint garnish, but you can also run delicious rice balls if you don't have access to the ascended one. Your utility, bountiful maintenance oil on the other hand, is so much better than any alternative that you should never cheap out on it. So here's your opener. Cast Call of the Wild and Pet Swap at the same time. Cast both your spirits and pet F2. Enter CA and cast 4 and 5 while spamming 2, then leave CA. From this point on onwards, you just need to remember, press your spirits, call of the wild and swap pets of cooldown, enter CA whenever possible, and always cast rejuvenating tides while spamming seed of life, 
use lunar impact and cosmic ray if people need more healing otherwise use natural convergence if your ca is on cooldown and you need healing use cliff of rejuvenation and or swap to stuff better still by blasting sublime conversion with ancestral grace and target people outside of the main group with solar beam and astral wisp Remember to swap back to Warhorn afterwards to keep casting Call of the Wild of cooldown. Press Glyph of Equality outside of CA for CC or for stability whenever you need those. Press Pet F2 for CC and if you don't need CC, of cooldowns for boons. Your CC skills in the order of strongest to weakest are Glyph of Equality outside of CA, Call of the Wild, Gazelle or Electric Wyvern F2 skill, Lunar Impact. You can also apply soft CC with natural convergence, winter bites, and vine surge. But trust me, in most cases, your hard CC skills will be enough. That's it for today. An updated version of the intermediate guide coming soon. If you have any questions, drop by my stream or join my Discord, and I'll be happy to help.